started my post-secondary education at a small state college in rural Georgia. And while you may not know me that well, even if this is your first time listening to the show, you've probably already figured out that I'm not exactly right for a small state college in rural Georgia. Let's just say that my theological opinions ran counter to the prevailing ones. You might have also picked up on the fact that I don't really give a shit who I offend, so as you can imagine, this made for a combustible mix that didn't take long to ignite. I all but insured it with what I thought was a harmless and excessively hilarious gag. My dorm number was 174, but with a piece of poster board and a sharpie, I cleverly changed that to 666. Now, rural Georgia or no, I didn't actually think this would piss anybody off. I mean, sure, they're all Christians there, but this is college. We're all a bunch of seditious rebels telling the status quo to go fuck itself, right? Well, as it turns out, not so much. Later that day, I came back to a 174 where I'd left a 666, and below it there was a handwritten note taped to my door. Now, I can't recall every word of it, but I remember the opening line exactly. It said, All the rest of us on this hall are Christian. The righteous vandal went on to explain that they didn't want to see none of my satanic crap any know-how, and if I didn't love Jesus, I didn't belong in that dorm hall. I didn't belong at that college. I didn't belong in that state and come down to it. I didn't belong in this country. I was not welcome. So, of course, I left a response. Again, I don't recall it verbatim, but it was a variation on the following. How feeble is your conviction if the very fact that someone disagrees with you threatens it? I probably used a lot more words than that, and I probably ensured that a few of them would send his ass to the dictionary, but that was the core of my rebuttal. It's been 20 years, and I'm starting to think he's not going to respond at all. But that continues to be my strongest issue with religion as a whole. If your idea had merit, it wouldn't need you there to defend it. You could simply place it in the public arena, and it could fend for itself. Now, if you want to see this deafening echo of the threat response, just express your atheism on any social media venue and watch the wagon circle. They'll attack your intellect, your motivations, your morals, your conviction, and occasionally your penis size, and that seems to be regardless of your gender. They'll gather together like white blood cells to defend their precious idea, but meritorious ideas don't need white blood cells. If your idea needs to be reinforced once a week, it's bullshit. If you need to read the same book over and over again and hang out with people pre-screened to agree with you, you're just given the bullshit armor. If your idea needs to be propagated by an organized group that exists only to propagate your idea, it's because it's bullshit. And finally, if you're threatened by people thinking you're full of shit, it can only be because you're full of shit. Nobody's ever shown up at my door on Saturday morning to convince me that A is equal to C if they're both equal to B. Nobody ever had to sneak a pamphlet into my Halloween candy to convince me that elephants are bigger than gerbils. Nobody ever woke up early and dressed their kids up so they could go somewhere and sing songs about how cesium atoms have 55 protons. Nobody ever passionately held a belief because it was true. If it was true, you wouldn't need passion. Logic is more than enough of a scaffolding to hold up a genuine fact. You only need passion when logic isn't enough. 